3 of A Mice and Men, Relenting to Curly's Wife. First thing to say about uh, Chapter 3 and Relenting to Curly's Wife is that Curly's wife is not actually in this cha chapter, but she is discussed throughout. Curly's wife only appears three times in the novella. She appears when George and Lenny first arrive, she appears when she goes into Crooks' room, and she appears in, the, in her death scene. Steinbeck still makes her a dangerous, lurking presence in the background. So even though she's not physically there, we still feel her presence. George dealt and Whit picked up his cards and examined them. Seen the new kid yet? He asked. What kid? So straight away, Steinbeck has used the word kid twice in two sentences. This is basically showing us what the other people on the ranch think of her. So it's quite interesting the contrast between what Curly's wife wants the men to think. She wants to see them as sexually attractive woman, but they see her as a child. So, well, ain't she a Lulu? So Lulu, if you can't quite remember, we did talk about it in the class. So Lulu is a slang term sort of in the 1930s America for, for an attractive or uh, pretty woman. Okay, so George says he hasn't seen that much of her, and then Wit says, well, stick around and keep your eye, eyes open. You'll see plenty. She ain't concealing nothing. I never seen nobody like her. She got the eye going all the time on everybody. I bet she even gives stable bucks, so uh, crooks the eye. I don't know what the hell she wants. So, when it says... She ain't concealing nothing. That could mean two things. It may mean that her clothing, so what she's wearing, is revealing. It might also mean that she's not concealing anything about her intention. So she's making it perfectly clear that she's flirting with these men. Also, I never seen anybody like her is Wit or Steinbeck telling us that this is something out of the ordinary, that all of the men have not seen too many people like Curly's wife. But down here we've got uh, Curly's got yellow jackets in his drawers. So yellow jacket means wasps and it basically means wasps in your pants. So it's an old expression from 1930s America. So it's very similar to ants in your pants. It just means that Curly was very anxious. Whit then goes on to say she's looking for Curly or she thought she left something laying around and she's looking for it. Seems like she can't keep away from guys and Curly's pants is just crawling with ants but they ain't nothing come of it yet. So we'll go back to yet in a second but straight away we can see where it says she's looking for Curly or she thought she, something laying, thought she left something laying around. Basically this is um, the men saying that they know she's not looking for Curly, they know she's just using any old excuse to come and talk to them. She can't keep away from guys, so that's telling us to reiterate him that this is where she gets her attention from. She loves getting the attention from men. And we know that later on this is all to do with her loneliness. She's desperately lonely, which we'll go on to see later in, in the following chapters. But also it's interesting that we can actually see why Curly would have pants that are crawling with ants, so why he would be anxious. So if you think to yourself, if you married someone and two weeks later they were trying to flirt with any um, man or woman they could see, then we can see a little bit into Curly's Curly's sort of mind there and why he would be upset. So George said she's going to make a mess. Also, quickly, going back to the words, yeah, that's important because Wit is saying that nothing's happened, however, they know. So the word yet is telling the audience or foreshadowing to the audience that they know something bad is going to happen, that something, this, all of these things revolving Curly's wife is going to come to a head. There is going to be a climax and it's not going to be pretty. So George said she's going to make a mess. They're going to be a bad mess about her. She's gel bait, all set on the trigger. That Curly got his work cut out for him. Ranch with a bunch of guys on it. Ain't no place for a girl especially like her. So we know the word uh, gel bait is another derogatory comment about her. Gel bait again is someone who's under the legal age for um, consent to have sex. Um, but basically we know Curly's wife's probably about 18 or 19. But the important thing is that um, it's a woman or a girl, or especially a girl, who's going to get a man into trouble. So where it says here she's a gel bait all set on the trigger, if you imagine if someone's got their hand on the trigger, it couldn't. It, this is imagery for maybe uh, killing someone. So if you put your hand on the trigger of a gun, you're going to shoot. You can definitely hurt someone. You're going to maybe even kill them. So figuratively, it may mean she's going to kill dreams or kill someone's hope. Or literally, it might mean, well, maybe she actually will kill someone. But later on, we do know that she's at least partly responsible for Lenny's death. Also, this bit is quite interesting here where it says ranch with a bunch of guys in it. 
Ain't no place for a girl. Um, we can link it back to the context that women were seen as second class citizens and they weren't really seen on the same level as men. And George is basically saying here that because it's a, a lot of men in the same environment, that a girl shouldn't be there. The especially like her part though actually changes the quote and again becomes an insult into um, to Curly's wife. So George is basically saying, well, actually, it could be okay. It's not ideal, but it could be okay if it was, in quote, a normal girl, but not for a tarty, flirty, or jailbait girl like they see Curly's wife to be. And also, again, this is the notion that they all they do is see her as a girl. So she's trying to come across as a woman, but every single character, whenever they talk about her, they use the word girl to describe her. So again, showing how young they think she is, how naive they think she is. It's also important to note that they actually probably by this point just find her annoying. They don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to get into trouble. So they just find her annoying. They don't really want any part of that. Carlson said casually, Curly been in yet? No, said we're what's eating on Curly? Blah, blah, blah. He spends his half time looking for her and the rest of the time she's looking for him. So interestingly, Curly and Curly's wife never meet in the novella apart from when she dies. So in in life, we never see them talk, we never see them interact. I know there's a scene in the movie where they interact, but you just gotta forget that, because this isn't, we're not looking at the movie, we're looking at the novella. So you could say if they never meet, shows, Simon is telling us how separate lives they lead. Yeah, so we're seeing all the difference between them. They never meet, we never get to see how they interact. We never get to see their house where they're having dinner at night or see them when they're chatting at late at night um, around the fire or anything like that. We don't see them ever together, so that's important. And they do mention each other, but never in a pleasant way. So if Curly comes in, he's always annoyed because he's trying to find someone to be with his wife. When Curly's wife mentions her husband, it's normally that she's looking for him or towards the latter part of the novella that she's criticizing him. She says he's a swell guy. She says that sarcastically. She even actually says, I wish someone would beat him up. She actually says, I don't like Curly. So it's just quite an amazing thing to say about someone you've married um, two weeks before. Um, so we actually begin to think why if she doesn't want to see Curly, then why should she keep asking him? So one theory could be that she actually just wants to know where he is so she can avoid him. So if they say he's somewhere, then she can make sure she's not there. Also, she wants to know where he is because if he's gone back to the house, like actually does happen, she should be there cooking his dinner. So she doesn't want to get in trouble in terms of maybe she's scared that he might um, punch her or uh, domestically abuse her. So again, we're getting, even though it's spelt out for us la later on in the novella, we're beginning to realize with Curly's wife here that all she's doing is trying to get attention, that the flirting probably isn't that serious, but she's just cooped up in a house and she just wants some extra attention from the men. So that's chapter three basically done. So what I'll do now is I will show you my notes page. So if you can copy some of this stuff into your extract, whatever you think is applicable. Um, if you don't want to write some stuff down, you don't need to, it's so whatever, whatever you think. Notes page, I will let you sort of read through it. So pause it. Um, I will continue to sort of scroll down in a second. So pause whatever part you want, add whatever you want and add, leave whatever you want to leave. So that's it for chapter three of this podcast. Uh, thanks for listening.